This video is about <clears throat> uh, uh, cash flow waterfalls with things like DSCR debt service debt service D debt service coverage ratio lock ups and or cash sweeps and or debt service reserve accounts and it's also about just in general debt structuring i have been meaning to make this video just with some modeling issues some minimum and maximum modeling issues uh, for a while and i haven't kind of got got around to it and Ultimately, what we'll do is show you how with different assumptions about volatility and in particular mean reversion and different assumptions about how you put a DSCR together with those or, or, or a debt to capital constraint with those, how, how these things like a lock up covenant, a cash sweep, how these things affect the probability of default and how again in theory in theory not in practice you can measure this with Monte Carlo simulation now I have some real clients occasionally well more more than that and I if I would start showing my clients Monte Carlo simulation, they would probably get really angry at me. And so we'll use Monte Carlo simulation as a tool to illustrate what you're doing and then finally talk about in practice what it all means. So here's the, the, the <laughs> I have this thing. It, for me, a, a definition of project finance rather than being a debt issue a, a, a thing, a, a type of debt, it's going backwards. You're using debt capacity to go backwards and, and really measure the risk and the value of an investment. That's why I say I couldn't summarize this in kind of a very short phrase, and perhaps that's what we'll do. So, so then, now, if you go to the, oh, where are we? Where are we? If, if you go to the website, my, the website, it's the only stupid thing. Uh, uh, if you go to the very last one and you go to Project Finance Theory and Courses, I've started adding a little more. I've tried to be better about this by putting the PowerPoint slides and then a little description of some of these uh, um, uh, 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 associated Excel files right up here. So you go all the way to the end, down to the first one, okay? So let's get started. Uh, and I'm going to go back to this one. I'm going to go down quickly. I'm going to have to also turn the, the, the video on and off a little bit. And uh, all right, where are we? And I, again, what I'm really doing if you want to know, I'm practicing for some courses I'm giving, so I would love you to sign up for a course that I don't have put up. I haven't been able to put this together, but I have a feeling I'm going to lose all my regular old business and start trying to do something much more interesting in life, which is have courses with you, and I really want to find places in the world where we can kind of go for go go there for reasonable cost in terms of carbon and in terms of uh, a, a, a cost and provide these in a cost effective way so the idea of this class was to talk about different project finance contracts but a big contract is loan agreement that's a contract and here's the way when you either looking at a loan agreement or looking at a financial model and for example the assumptions in a financial model 
you'll start with the debt size. How big is the debt? Then you'll start with, well, how do you get the debt into the project? Is it equity first, EBL, which is like equity last kind of in a way, or equity after COD, or pro rata? How do we get up to this debt size? And right at the COD right here, that's where you hit the maximum debt size. And then how do you repay? And the repayment can be a really big issue. And then in the meantime, you can't really see this, but this shows you the uh, interest expense. And in this case, I just have a flat repayment. So the interest expense is going down. Those are the four key parts of any debt issue. They should be laid out in the loan agreement. They should be in a financial model, in the assumptions and in the, in, in, in the analysis. And then you have these nice features which can confuse you, like the debt service reserve account. Somebody called it the liquidity springing reserve. I've moaned about that before. And how you, uh, what about the lockup covenants and the cash sweeps? Okay, so we begin. I'm just going to go through a few slides, actually. You know, any, any kind of summary should show you the debt size with the sources and uses of funds and a little bit on the repayment structure. And I can't emphasize this graph enough, the, which we'll look at again, which has cash flow and the repayment bounces around with the cash flow because perhaps it's a solar wind. And then you've got a tail and you see the DSCR and you see the tail and you've seen so much of what's going on with this project in terms of what the cash flows look like, in terms of what the DSCR looks like, in terms of what the tail looks like. For debt service, debt size, excuse me, I, this is the, the loan agreement I put up on the website because the bank that did this is bankrupt. And I will ask a question. Tell me the debt size. And everybody will look up, oh, 80%, is it 225 million, 220 million? And they won't look way, way down to the DSCR and look at this key paragraph that I've mentioned too many times before, where they say the minimum and the average DSCR shall be no less than 1.35. So this 80% is not 80%. It says no more than 80%. It's less than 80% if one of these two DSCR constraints is violated, and that gets into the whole strategy of debt sizing. And the reason this is even in there, some people could argue, and I've heard this argument before, forget debt size, forget the debt to capital. We are totally focused on, 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 we think we're so good at making a forecast over 20 or 30 years, we're focused on how much buffer you have, how much, how much extra, this is kind of backwards, I know, but how much extra, it's that graph, how much extra above the cash flow can we accept? And that gets into all of our volatility and mean reversion and all those cash flow forecasting issues. When we use a buffer, we're saying we can make a cash flow forecast, but again, what happened if the debt, if the equity down here, I think there's some equity down here, what happens if that's zero? Then we have a more philosophical or soft issue. There's no skin in the game. And if the project, you, I ask, well, do you, as an investor, do you care about the project? The right answer is yes, you do. You care about it if it's really good, but a, a case study I didn't put on here, which is a kind of good case study, it's this old AES Drax. This Drax plant is so famous, it's gone through so many different iterations and changes and all that. That's this gigantic plant in Yorkshire, England, which is now, uh, they, they, whether it's a greenwashing, because now it's instead of coal, uh, 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 what is it, uh, 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 wood pellets, the reason I'm mentioning that is ah, AES put a little bit of money in this project. It didn't work. Merchant prices went down. It gave the bank the keys. It didn't have any skin in the game. Okay, you want skin in the game so that people will make uh, prudent decisions. Okay, and that I, I'm not going to go through the DSCR again. 
but the real it, it really gets into do you believe cash flows and you want people to put real cash in in, in the game now here's here's the problem with with uh, 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 the debt to capital method this kind of skin in the game debt to capital we want to we want to keep 80 percent well how many ways can you pad the cost of something now when you pad the cost of something you've got to be really careful you don't want to pad the cost and just waste money no that's not what you want to do you want to include the chairman's salary as a, as, a, as a woman's salary, as a cost of the project. You want to include a development fee that you just pay yourself as a cost of the project. You want to include all of these development costs. You want to allocate everything you can to the cost of the project. You can even go further. You could even pay the EPC uh, 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 provider, assuming it's not you, pay them a little extra. Give them a profit. But then take and do something creative and, and, and make them take that profit and invest it in the plant as equity so it pushes up the equity. But then you, you want to kind of give them not so much of a dividend or something else. You, 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 you want to do, there are a whole lot of tricks to pu push up the cost of the project. Okay, and that's a list of them. I guess I have the... The, the list of them. So maybe the kind of the strategy is you, you, you want to get as good, a positive cash flow forecast as possible, but there might be a little bit less of that that you can do with the bank. You've got to negotiate that. And if you get too much debt with that cash flow forecast, you just start adding some of these, these costs in, okay? And I think uh, uh, when we talk about the DSCR, I don't know why this is Fitch. Why would they even show you A or double B? This is everything. A PV project, that's a solar PV. We'll have a 1.2. These things are irrelevant. Basically, when you're looking at the DSCR, you're realizing these projects are going to have about a triple B. That, if you count, double A, blah, 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 down, triple B, down, blah, 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 D. C, triple C, whatever. Triple B minus is right in the middle, and below triple B minus is below investment grade. You want to keep it just as investment grade, whether it's a, a, a bank debt or a, or a regular debt. Okay, and there's a graph. You can find that on the disk. It's a Standard and Poor's graph, I think they probably have a little bit less of these. I don't know how many I shouldn't, you, you know, in solar projects for example it's pretty rare to have bond financing at least at the, during the construction period maybe i'm a little wrong with that you can yell at me if i'm a, a little wrong with that so now what we're going to do now i'm going to move to the to the model and this is that uh, uh, it's going to be called simulation analysis v4 or v5 and right now what I've, i i i i i'm afraid of this so we have, because, because I don't want to waste time with it, we have a debt to capital of 80% and a, a, and a minimum DSCR of 1.2. I put a low DSCR and I put a really, really long tail. Don't worry about this tail. We'll talk about it later. Now, when you do this, it gives you 86%. So in, in the real world, we couldn't issue 86%. Now, what we could do is two things. You could constrain this cash flow and have it pay off early. But if you do that, it's very negative. Instead of that, you can restructure and design a DSCR that's a little bit higher. A higher DSCR with the same cash flow gives you less debt service. And remember, I suppose I'll, I'll, I'll move to this one just for a minute. Okay. This is the funding of the, of the debt. We'll maybe come back to that no, just a little bit. But the, the, these are our different patterns. The present value of this cash flow, if we've got a longer uh, a, a debt, we're going to get more debt. We're going to get more, more debt service. PV of the debt service 
gives you that. So the basic formulas are, are of course, this. I say, of course, because I've been doing it for so long. And you can adjust this PV formula. You can adjust it anyway. There is no reason with one exception. And that's if you are designing what we call this curved sculpting. But there's generally absolutely no reason whatsoever to not, and, and the interest rate can change, the DSCR can change, the, it all works. And you get the target debt service and then this target debt service goes down here, and you take the PV, and that's the debt right at the COD. You have to fund that debt and, uh, uh, and repay it, okay? And you can, this is, shows you how you can make these adjustments, and you can make adjustments. Now, what we're going to do next is this is really the repayment section. We're going to say, no, 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 uh, uh, we want the NPV of the debt to be the debt to capital ratio, so this, we have to adjust the DSCR so we got our 80% debt. That's what we're going to do. And the way I suggest to do this is to take, uh, first of all, we, we, we get the debt service with the DSCR. So we take the project cash flow, divide it by the DSCR, and multiply it. Don't forget to multiply it by you need a, a, a repayment flag and, and this tenor I'll call this tenor and I'll, I'll put repayment flag next to that okay so this is I've done this way too many times shift control R does that work and so it this time we have a very short tail the reason I'm doing this the reason I'm doing this is is uh, uh, I'm going to show you how the Monte Carlo simulation works with this. But then we can take this cash flow and multiply this cash flow over the debt tenor. And that gives, that's like the basis for the numerator for the LLCR. Then I put the interest rate in. And since I kept that constant in this simple example, if we take the net present value of 5% of all this, we get we get here the, 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 the PV of the CFADS. And if I take this ooh, divided by, and when I divide it by, I, I'm doing it. See, this is, I, I should have practiced this before, really. The total CapEx times the debt to capital, that's the debt. So uh, uh, I, I get a DSCR of 1.2. Oh, no. Shift control Q maybe uh, 1.3. So the DSCR, I'm going to take the maximum of this number or this number, which was our, 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 our target. I can use this one. I'll, I'll use this one. Okay, and then I'll be able to compare that. And so this time, I'm going to go back to our starting point again, divide that by our higher DSCR gives a lower debt service. Don't forget to multiply it by this. And that's how easy all this, this stuff is. And now I've got to just, uh, just a minute, I've got to pause the video. Shoot. That was, I'm so pissed about this. One of these People, they call every day. I, I live in an apartment or a flat, and I can't put a solar panel on. Why do these people call all the day? What pisses me off about that is they're increasing the cost of solar so much by just hiring all these telemarketers. That's a different subject. Okay, so we have this. And then now the NPV of the debt service is just, this is kind of the final debt service line that we're going to select which is, is the, so, so it's, it's this. Now, if, if I, let's just do one little thing. If I, right now, so right now, the, the, oops, if we take, oh, no, just a minute, just a minute. Oh, I got the pause again, shoot. I, I'll blame that one on the phone call, okay? It's, it, we, we divide it by our kind of final, uh, uh, DSCR ratio, okay, shift control R, and then we get 80%. Now, if I would constrain this, and let's say our, our loan is shorter, then 
I have to go and figure out how to do something with the bank. I, I want to do something with the bank to get that cash flow up or the DSCR down or do some sort of negotiating. That's what drives the debt size and the debt out of all those factors. You know, the interest rate after you, after you issue the debt, you can, pro you can refinance. Okay, not probably. You can refinance. You can change the interest rate. You can change the tenor. You can change the debt terms with the cash sweeps and everything else. If you refinance during the construction period, maybe you can even re change the way the debt is funded, although that, that would be a little more tricky. But you can't change the size of the debt. Once the debt size is determined, it's there, and it determines the amount of equity. And I used to mess around and say, oh, let's play with this, play with that, play with that. What you need to do is do whatever you can to get a higher debt size. And that's kind of the problem. Okay? And I think that's enough. I'm going to put it back to 34 just for a minute, and I'll explain why. Okay? Now, uh, um, so I'm going to, now, it, when I, I kind of skipped over the, the, the debt funding just a little bit, they, there are a number of issues with the funding of the debt. I just had an issue where, uh, you, you know, we, maybe you try to pay dividends during, before the, before the, the debt is, is, is all issued. That will boost the, the IRR a lot. And the reason is because the equity IRR, and it, this time it's not just a, a, a matter of how the equity IRR is calculated, the mechanics of the formula. You put less money down, and, and the IRR is influenced so much more by the first couple of times you put the money in the project and so much less by the later times you take it out. So you wonder, the best thing you can do is put the debt in at first and then get the equity last. Of course, that's diametrically opposed to what the banks want. So then maybe this is where you, 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 you get the, uh, 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 you, okay, if you get pre-commercial cash flow, you can play a lot of tricks with that. But this is where you might get some company support. And I don't see how, well, huh. an equity bridge loan, I, I think you need parent support. You need to get an email, be able to, your parent needs to be able to say an e, send an email to say, I'm going to promise you that I'm going to repay that equity. EBL, all it means, it's such a simple thing to really model. All it means is that you pretend you're putting the equity in first, not pro rata, where you put the equity and the debt equal. You put the equity first, you pretend you do that, and then you get a loan for that equity, and it can be a, 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 a loan with a pretty low interest rate. And then you've got a promise to repay that loan. In the old days, you'd pay it at this commercial operation date, your marriage date. But nowadays, you can even pay it afterwards, and it affects the IR dramatically. And the accountants say the interest on that loan is allocated to the project, and that, and that loan itself is on the books of that project. So it looks a heck of a lot like you should account for the equity cash flow with the EBL, and I'm not going to get into that issues that issue right now. So we went through the repayment, and, and the only really thing to further re-emphasize is these repayments have sculpting. And, and customizing the repayment to the not only the risks of the cash flow, but the patterns of the cash flow is another really big deal that makes project finance so different. And imagine you have these two scenarios. And imagine in both scenarios, now I didn't really make a nice enough graph. The DSCR is really low here. And the DSCR is kind of flat here. That's what sculpting does. And if you would want this DSCR over here to be that, we'd have to push it way down and we'd have a whole little brown area and we'd have a whole little bit of debt. That's the importance of sculpting. If everything is flat, 
or if, if the cash flow is going to go down, maybe you could just have a, this, this has got a flat repayment. And if you got a flat repayment, the interest goes down and down and down. So this is all, all interest kind of almost at the end. Uh, uh, no, <laughs> uh, 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 less interest, excuse me. It's still, you've got to still pay an interest on the kind of last little bit. That's why it goes down. But you can hopefully see you're trying to do the big deal, which is what you cannot change, and you want to do anything you can in those negotiation with that banker to get to get as much debt into the project as, as you can. You can get a lot, maybe you can refinance after a year or so and, and get a whole lot of debt in afterwards. But still, you've had to put all that equity down up front. And that's what you hate to do. So those are our equations. And there's, oh, maybe that's a little bit of a better sculpting diagram. That helped me see. I did that during the class. I didn't really need both of those, did I? I'm going to take one of them out. And then let's talk about the, the interest rate just a minute. Because because remember, uh, I'm going all the way up. I'm going all the way up to here. Remember, we had these only these five five parts, including this the, this last part. And the theory of the interest rate, I, I, I don't know. In, in my life, I've gone around two things. I, you, you look at realistically what interest rates are, and, and, and let me do it. Let me do it this way. I'm going to pause for a second. I just paused, but I'm resuming immediately. You, you, you go to the, the, the website, you go to databases, and then you go to this one called interest rates. And I've done this way too much with you, and I'm sorry, I, I'm, I'm going to do it again. You open up the file. Now, when you open up this file, uh, uh, please, with some of these files that use, what, what, what they use is, in Excel, they use the indirect function. And the, the, the thing, uh-oh, protected view. Let's see what happens if I press enable editor. Oh, shoot. And then this is what I was afraid. You get this stupid pink thing. Oh, my gosh. And then what you got to do is, is close the file. I'll go ahead and show you this stupid thing. And then you go to wherever you saved this file. And I hope I saved it in some kind of downloads. Uh, and then you right click on that file and you have to go to the, there are the properties. And then you got to go to the properties and unblock it. So I guess it's good I showed you that one. And then I guess we can open that file I, in Excel or whatever. Microsoft just started doing this. And I can't even get it unblocked from myself. What a what a joke that is for me. That's that's really me. I'm not criticizing famous Microsoft. Oh my gosh. Now what happened is here, it uses the date and it's kind of flattened over here. I, I use a 30 year inflation. And over here I put all of these things. They're 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 just from the the, the whatever it is, the the Fred data, and you can trick it by getting text files. They don't show you. They used to allow you to get text files, and they still do, but you they don't show it to you. And so what you do is you press this clear sheets one, three out of 79, so obviously I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop you from uh, uh, <laughs> watching this, and I'm going to come back when uh, uh, they're all uh, uh, calculated, which will be basically a minute. So it took 1.82 minutes, and then here's here's what happens. I've I've tried all of these uh, uh, different uh, uh, kind of ways to present the data, and for some reason, if I present just two series on the same sheet, it seems to work well. So. The nice thing about this that I've shown you before, you can get a, a, a triple B credit spread. And I argue this is, a, and then let's get a, let's get a double B credit spread again. So this is this, this big investment grade versus non-investment grade. 
Okay, and then if you look back in, this was probably in, in 2008. Yeah, I started in 2006, and this was right when COVID hit. And right now, a triple B credit spread is pretty good. It's, it's, it's 1.28, and the uh, 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 double B is 2.19. So I don't know, maybe, maybe a little bit less than 1% or 100 basis points fancier and then what you can do well let let's take away that crazy 2008 period so you can really kind of see how that how the how the especially this line kind of goes a, around and I don't know maybe it's a little bit less it was really low around here so you can kind of see it or you know maybe uh, let let's compare it to to a uh, 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 a credit spread so we can really see what's going on and I have these things that are still part of the 2008 crisis so let's start in 2010 and kind of being able to look what happens here I mean this was this this crazy little tiny period when the stock market went down and all that and then we got a really low rates and right now it's uh, uh, whatever uh, uh, single A, if you could get a single A, you could get a lot lower, but you'd get a lot less debt. That's why you don't make it single A. That's why you target this kind of number. And then instead of, together with the A credit spread, what I like to look at is a 10-year treasury. That's like a 10-year swap rate. You can try to get LIBORs and all that, and, and, and then put a swap on the LIBOR. But So right now we've got a problem that the interest rates are going up and as of of this one a 10 year was 4.06 let's just look at a 20 year a 20 year was a little bit higher which makes sense because you're taking more inflation risk and a 30 year is 4.26 kind of less than a 10 year if you go to the five year normally you would expect that to be a lot lower it's a little bit lower right now and then if you go to the kind of one year, it should be a lot lower, but it's a lot higher because of the short-term inflation expectations and, and, the, and the, all the Federal Reserves and, and all of that. So I'm going to use a 10-year Treasury, and then if I want to get a rough idea of what kind of total rate, you can switch this to an area graph sometimes if I switch it back. So we 4.06 plus 1.28 gives you a rough idea. Now, what you really want to know is if this credit spread is for a one-year, a ten-year, five-year, and I've looked all that up. Not maybe if I spent a day on it, it would be better, or even a, a, a few more hours. But you can see how this kind of this rate went down that you could kind of get three percent. So this has gone up, but the inflation has gone up too. So the real rate is what matters. Now let's go back and continue our little discussion. And and the big deal for me, this is shows you how sometimes you have these step up credit spreads. And I used to say, ah, that doesn't really matter. But if you're going to use this to size the debt, if this is affecting the size of the debt, which it probably is because of the DSCR, these thing, these stupid step-ups really matter. Maybe you could negotiate this versus some other thing you, 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 you don't care about. But basically, all, all, all of the kind of interest rates in the tenor go into sizing the debt from the DSCR, you know? So, so that, and that's what, of course, makes the P90 so important in solar. Okay, and then this is, I took this from somebody else, of course, the probability of loss times uh, d default times a loss given default is supposed to give you the theoretical credit spread. And you can do all these kind of calculations, and I used to go crazy with this. And then you can kind of look and try to see what the default rates have been which drive the credit spread in theory and you get these you you get this scant kind of data from s p and a couple of studies but this triple b if we look at this triple b can i see this triple b it's about let's say this triple b is about 10 percent something like that 
and that's accumulated. There's virtually no probability of default, and then it increases over the final amount. But that's just the probability of default, not the loss given default. So maybe you've got a 5% credit spread over a long period of 5% default that increases. And when you go to the mathematics of this, those credit spreads are higher than what would be justified just by the probability of default. And what is happening is the banks are making some money. Well, okay, they all need to make a profit, right? Okay, so that's the, a little bit of background, and it shows where the defaults ha have been, and the, there are these big defaults in the merchant electric power business, really, in the U.S. a lot. And, and frankly, the defaults have been less than less in, in, in Africa. The lowest one here is the Africa and the Middle East, I think. Okay, this is the trends. Okay, so now let's get to our final part, which is these credit enhancements and the DSCR. DSRA, MRA, cash flow sweeps, and all these covenants that, again, I don't know how important this is to negotiate. If, again, the debt size is the most important. You could probably refinance and get these uh, uh, fixed later. And, and here's my, from a banking perspective, if you've got a really crappy project, that has negative cash flow. You don't have any cash flow. The only thing you can really do, the only thing you can do is limit the dividends. After that, you're stuck. And if you've got let, uh, low enough cash flow that you can't service the debt, forget it. You've got nothing. So you've got to understand that this is, this is just a game of do we allow the dividends. Now, the dividends have to be allowed. If you don't allow dividends, again, it's kind of that IRR business. The IRR would be killed so bad. So you could have a 100% cash sweep, for example, but then you really destroy the IRR. So that's the, 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 that's the real trade-off, okay? Allowing dividends versus not allowing dividends. And we could do a dividend capture. What we do there is we say, okay, if the DSCR gets below a certain level, it's kind of just a yes or no question if you get below a certain no dividends allowed. And, but let's say you have a lockup. It's called a dividend lockup. Let's say the DSCR is 1.8 uh, uh, and the lockup, no, 1 point, uh, uh, sorry, 1.18. But, and the lockup says if, if the dividend, if the DSCR is below 1.2, you can't pay a dividend. You've got some extra cash flow. What do you do with that cash flow? Oof. You've got to put it in a bank account and let it sleep. Maybe you get a little bit of interest income on that, but that's basically what you do. And you hate to let cash sleep. You hate to let cash sleep. All these terms I've got from, from wonderful people in my class. We can put a cash sweep in there, and somebody from Enron <laughs> took a class. Oh, cash sweep, that's a good time, covenant, good time, because when the cash flow is really high, you're not allowing a dividend again. It's all about the dividends. Instead, you're making the company repay the debt early. By the way, on a, on, 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 on a, 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 a cash trap covenant, if the cash flow gets really low, you want to keep it in cash, but eventually you can say, let's just use that cash to pay off the debt and be finished. A debt service reserve account is a little bit different. You put that up front, or you have a credit card. You have a credit card when little things go bad, like I lost my passport. Oh my God, what a, what a horrible nightmare that was. Oh, I was in Malaysia and I had to call the embassy and then I found my passport after a day, and I missed my flight, and I had to pay for a new flight, paid for a new hotel, oh my God. Well, the hotel was nice and cheap, it was 15 US dollars. And they're nice to me there. But I had to have some cash available. I could have a credit card available or cash available. And basically, the DSCR is supposed, the DSRA is supposed to do that. It can also help you just a tiny little bit. You've got six months of reserves. So if you're just missing the 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 DSCR the, the 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 if you got a little bit of a cash deficit only six months over the life of the whole project six months of debt service over the then it can help you and then we can have other things like guarantees and 
junior debt. And here, here's what somebody was, it's so good. If you're in the middle of a project and the, D, the debt service DSCR goes below one, the question is, what can you do? The bank officially can take over the project. It can step in. It can't, it can't. Declaring bankruptcy is a really silly thing to do if you've got valuable contracts. It can step in, take over the project, and you can have bankers all running uh, LNG project. Good for that. Or the project kind of sucks because it's got really low cash flow. You can sell it to somebody else. Who else is going to want to buy this silly thing for a good price? That's not going to happen. The people who are managing the project, you want them to do it. So all you can do is what? A wonderful person from Japan told me, he said, waiver, waiver. That's all you can do is issue a waiver. And then you can, you get into a more complicated and really interesting issue. If you sweep all of the cash flow, if once this project is, is failing, you never ever allow the equity holders to have any prospect for a return whatsoever, they're not going to have a much incentive to run this plant efficiently. So you get these kind of interesting things happening with all this stuff. And I think what I'm going to do now is skip to the, the model. And in the model, here's what I want to do now. Now, I'm sorry if this is taking a little bit. Uh, whatever. I, hopefully I can, I, I can get this done reasonably quickly. So the first step is... is We've, we've structured the debt, and we've got the debt service. And this debt service depends up here on our estimated project cash flow. But then, if you want to illustrate, this could be part of a class, or it could be even, I, I, I'm very reluctant to say you'd ever use it, you first compute a random number, okay? Then, you say, okay, let's convert that random number into a draw from a normal distribution. Now, what I'm going to have to do in just a minute is I'm going to have to close this uh, file. Oh, hell, I'll save it. Okay. Uh, okay. And then, uh, uh, once you have this draw from a normal distribution, you multiply it by the standard deviation. This is like a standard, basically, a, this has got S. This is a standard deviation of 1, okay, or 100%. Or, uh, 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 and then you multiply it by your volatility, and you get a, a draw from a normal distribution that reflects your volatility. And then you can put a mean reversion factor and finally get a a little index, like an inflation index or something, where you start... Thing I just did. Okay, I, that little mistake, ooh, that was, a, that was a big deal. The mean reversion goes back to some production cost, goes back to some weather, goes back to some stable... A uh, 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 factor, if you've got a, 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 a some kind of engineering, some kind of uh, efficiency, it gets back to a, a a normal efficiency after it has a bad year. So that mean reversion factor is a really big deal, and 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 I've t done a couple of tests, and even if the mean reversion factor is very small, it makes a very big difference, and that's a lesson. Ooh, is that a lesson? If, if you're talking about a mean reversion factor of only 5%, it is so hard to try to calculate this mean reversion factor. And a small number makes a big difference. And that's why, instead of trying to do this mathematically, you really want to think through, do these risks, when they go bad, do they go bad forever, my uncle's uh, 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 handbags, or... Is there something that could take you back to kind of a normal level? If there is, the risk changes so dramatically. So we're putting different tails and different things. And now i got to continue. Sorry about that kind of thing. Okay. And, and then what we're, what we're uh, 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 after we have this Monte Carlo. Okay. Uh, I, I'm back and I have to edit things out. <laughs> 
the mean reversion, this one here that I input, this one is, is the mean. This one is, is the mean, so here's the formula, and I'm going to have to do a little editing. And, okay, so that, that's our... Now, we've got a cash flow that has some volatility, so we took our basic cash flow way up here, this 65, this basic cash flow, and we put some volatility in it, and we can see what our DSCR is, and get all of our PLCR, LLCRs, but this time we're going to make a cash flow waterfall. And let's just see how we make a cash flow waterfall. And the thing we're going to use so much right now is minimum and maximum, min, max, min, max, min, max. And the other thing we're going to use, well, maybe about three things, I've done this too much, but doing it with a Monte Carlo simulation is really so easy and so illustrative of, of, of things that really drive you, dr drive the, the analysis. So this cash flow, if, if we, uh, I have to do it like this, if I, if I put the calculate now, and I should have put a little calculate button up there, I didn't do that. If I, if I put calculate now, it gives us a different cash flow. And the whole issue with Monte Carlo simulation, much more than making draws, is, is, is getting this. Then, let's just step, I'm, I'm going to see if I can step through this. This cash flow, this was scheduled, this was the structured uh, uh, cash flow. Am I slouching down too much? And then, we might have a default, I think. I, I perhaps did this before, but let's do this. This is just because of, and, and I suppose I can show you how to do this. We, we make a, a little bit of a macro, and then put new, and then put uh, active sheet. No, just calculate. And, and that's, that, that's a macro, OK? And then the reason, I can't press F9 to calculate this, so. So now I can just calculate this, and you can see, just, just a minute, we sometimes have interest on the default. We don't only have interest on our scheduled, scheduled, whatever, however you say it, debt service. And the next thing you do is compute the DSCR, which is just, and you, uh, 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 that's the covenant. Let's make a DSCR covenant to be... Let me see. In this, in this case, I've been messing around with this. I've got a 1.2 times DSCR. You know, it's, it, it wouldn't be that uncommon to make the covenant also 1.2. So if you don't hit your target, you're not going to be allowed to pay a dividend. That's very different than sizing the debt. And we compare, we just do a simple comparison. If it's less than or equal to 1.2 or less than, you could debate now, it's not really matter. You can, you're violating the covenant, okay? And in this case, we're violating the covenant. If we violate the covenant, well, this time we had negative cash flow, we don't have anything, but this one was a little more, no. I want to violate the covenant, uh, 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 less deposit here. Our DSCR covenant was this. Uh, 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 we violated the covenant, we had a little bit of cash flow, we put that cash flow into reserve account. Okay, we keep putting that in. Now, the, once we put it into a reserve account, and the way you do this is always with a maximum, so if it's negative, if, I'm sorry, uh, 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 just a minute, maximum, we, we multiply the cash flow times our little flag if it's true, and we only uh, 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 put that in if it's, <coughs> if it's a negative number, we're not going to put that into our reserve account. We're going to have to keep going down on the cash flow waterfall. So that's our first max. And then we have a min. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, then, then we... Uh, 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 see how much we can withdraw. And we can only withdraw cash if the cash flow is positive. So what happened over here is we had really bad periods, and then we have a positive period. 
and that means we can take that out of our reserve account, but the amount we take out of our reserve account depends on how much our balance was. So then, and please, all of these calculations where you use the minimum, they're always based on the reserve account. So we, we can, we're not going to take any more money out than we have to. So in this, in this period, for example, we're going to, we had 62 of cash flow. We didn't violate our covenant. We could take that out. So we made a little maximum, the maximum test, whether it's a positive or negative, the minimum you use a balance. And uh, 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 with the minimum balance, you, I'm sorry, with the minimum, after you compute the opening balance and closing balance, we'll do in a minute. The opening balance is the whatever the last year closing balance. The deposit is how much we put in when we had some negative. It's when we had a little bit of extra money over and above our our reserve, and then you 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 take it out, but you won't take out more than the opening balance. So this this minimum, and I I, I put minimum with balance below, and you can see that that's part of the. Uh, uh, analysis and then the next thing I don't know if I mentioned this you take this subtotal uh, 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 you take away how much you uh, 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 put into the reserve account this you, now you're taking it out so this is uh, 14 so that gives you an extra cash flow uh, where are we putting it in in this case we're able to put some in so we had 2.33 of cash flow and we're taking it out. In this case, you had no cash flow. And I hope you can see that the maximum and minimum are crucial. And then we can have a DSRA balance. Now, the DSRA, the way I model the DSRA balance, I hope we can still do this. I have a feeling we can't. We're going to have to come on. I'm going to put, if it's 5, it's, half, it's, it's 0.5 of the... Uh, uh, debt service. So you can do this in all sorts of different ways. I'm going to make it extreme. I'm going to put a one-year DSRA in, which is kind of too much, especially for a project, well, a tight project, but okay. So uh, uh, right now, everything's too positive. We don't violate a covenant, and and we we have that DSRA balance, and the only thing that happens to our DSRA balance is as our debt service, scheduled debt service goes up, we have to have more in our debt balance. That's not a big deal for right now. It's what happens if the cash flow is negative. Now, you can only put cash flow into that debt service reserve if you have enough cash flow. So you can see, well, how much cash flow we have and do this little test, whether it's positive Okay, and if it's positive, we take the the minimum of of how much cash we have or the amount of cash we need. This uh, uh, cash we need. This is the debt service. I made a little complicated formula, which is almost a show off formula. Don't be a show off in Excel. Please don't be a show off. Please don't be a show off. Like we, there was this conference that Hetty wanted me to see with, I called it the Excel show off conference, where you get an MVP, most valuable player, person, whatever. It's the Super Bowl of Excel. Oh my God. Oh, I hate that. Okay, that was a digression. Okay, and now we've got to make a calculation. Let's get some negatives. Come on, get some, get some really bad ones. Here, okay. Here's what happened. We built up our debt service reserve account. We have some negative cash flow. And then we can, instead of, we can use the debt service reserve account balance to pay that off. And you notice that we have a min-max here again. F2. Oof. What just happened? It just, oh shoot, I lost that one. Let's get it. Oh good. We have a, we take, and the, the reason we have a min max is 
we first have to make sure, and, and this J87, which is the, it's always almost, you, that's why the subtotals are so important. You use the last subtotals, and then once you use the last subtotals, you, uh, 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 if, it's, if this is negative, well, we want to take it out. If it's positive, we don't want to take it out. That's why you have the max there. And then you can only take out how much you have in the reserve account. So luckily down here, we go down and we put all of the additional balances in. And I, I just, I'm sorry to be a radical here. And I know I might piss some people off right now. But if you have a bunch of accounts, I would hate to put them on different sheets. These are, they're so directly connected to the cash flow waterfall, I would be desperate to leave those in here. So we have an opening balance. This is our very first initial deposit. This is how much additional amounts we put in. We can't put any more in because we didn't have any cash flow. So we have to take it out. And with a few little maximum and min, and you notice all of these things come from the cash flow. You don't know what kind of balances all of these things except for the close, they come directly from the cash flow. That's where you do all your minimum and maximums. And then we'll have a default account. And then we'll put a new debt balance where we have our scheduled debt service with a min and, and we'll take away our cash flow. So that's what we're doing. Okay, and now let's see if we can, if, if I press a couple more, can we make it a really big negative one? In this case, I think what happened is uh, uh, we, we uh, let's see, in this case, whew, we, we, we still had some positive cash flow in this year, okay, and oops, and, and then we had some, uh, no, 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 this is positive cash flow. I'm looking for some negative cash flow. We had some negative cash flow. There's nothing left, uh, but now, Okay, now let's move to the cash sweep. And in the cash sweep, let's put, you know, let's put 50% in here. Okay, and then we, we just, with the, with the 50%, again, you, you, you do this, but the minimum calculation is a tiny bit more complicated because you, you uh, the, the minimum is the percentage of the cash flow flow sweep. But down here, I went to I-94, and I-94, I made a little bit of, uh, where's the, sorry about that. This is the, the, the cash flow after the debt service reserve account, and we take the minimum of I-146, excuse me, I was looking for I-146, and I-146 is the, the, opening balance minus the the amount you've already taken out to try to pay for it so you don't the the trick with a cash flow sweep is you've got to make sure that the waterfall is in order and you take away the scheduled repayment before you do the minimum test so it's like an adjust a little bit of an adjusted opening balance this cash flow sweep we in because we're repaying the debt early we need a minimum because in this case, we, we, our, we don't pay our scheduled debt service off. We pay the minimum of the opening balance or that debt service. Okay, and then our interest is, is adjusted. So, so we're, we're, we're beginning with this, the, the scheduled debt payment, which came from way upstairs. It came from 44, uh, uh, somewhere up here. 44, we computed our repayment in our structured model and our interest in our structured model, but those have to be adjusted for the cash sweep. And then finally, which I think is really important, I think it's really important to put a default in here. Let's see if I can get a default. Come on, come on. Ooh, there's a little bit of a default. Let me get a bigger default. Okay, I, I'm going to put a, a, a higher a volatility in here. No, I've got a really big volatility. I'll put no new reversion. 
and let's get some defaults. There we go. We've got some default. And then what we do is we accumulate these defaults. This All this really means is the debt didn't get paid. Now, in this case, we, we repaid the default, and then we got a little bit of positive cash flow, and we were able to kind of repay it. But there are going to be some cases. Oh, I can't find these. Oops, just a minute. Okay, I'm going to. Uh, we defaulted and defaulted and defaulted, and then we accumulate those defaults in a separate balance. It's really important to put those in a separate balance, and it's got a minimum, maximum. Of course, you look at this, and, and, and these things come from upstairs, and at the very end, we're not able to pay our... Uh, 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 we're not able to pay off our debt service at the very end. This is a true loss. This is a true default plus a loss given default. And then we take that, and we take that loss given default, and then we can compute the NPV of that default because it happened way in the future. We want to do it there, and we can get the default as a percentage of the initial debt. Maybe you could push it over to the... No, this, this would be right. Okay? And then we can, what we can do is just keep doing this a whole bunch of times and see how many times we get a default, okay? And we can see how many times we get this default with the cash flow sweep, with the, with the uh, 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 cash trap, and how, how important these little, uh, 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 the, these factors are, okay? And I just want to make sure that I have something right up here. Yes, this is our, this is our DSCR, and this is our, this is our our, our lockup DSCR and, and and our DSRA. Now, before I do this, I'm getting finished with this, and, and kind of the the theme here, I hope, is that. All right. We don't know these volatility and mean reversion statistics. Fine. We don't know those. But you can conceptualize these. These are judgments you have to make. And this illustrates, what we're going to do is illustrate if you have a tight project with a low uh, a DSCR and a low tail, you could still have a default. Okay, especially if the volatility is higher. So that might be, a, for example, an availability project where the efficiency can be different and, and all of that. And if you can kind of conceptualize what this, how this works. Now, if you want to look at how this actually works, it's really, it looks a little bit complicated. And if you're not used to, if you're not used to a VBA, I'm sorry about this. But we here, here's what we're going to do. We're going to, I made a little simulate program, okay? And we make a di dimension. I can never remember this, but you make a dimension. And these are, we're counting how many times the DSCR, DSRA, or computing the DSRA, how many times it falls below zero PSCR. Same thing with the default. How many times that... These are our, 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 our numbers. And then what we do is we make a little input box that says how many simulations you want, and you have to recompute the d d dimension. And notice how you put a variant here and then not a variant. Now, I, I'm getting in trouble these days because nobody's, nobody uses DSRAs and all that. And then I put a little label. And this is so easy to do. You make a little uh, user form. You insert, you go to insert and user form, and you make it totally blank. You just totally leave it blank. And then you go back to your uh, 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 VBA, and what you do is you say, okay, that label, I just put one little label here, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put running simulations, and the big deal here is to, and then I'm going to change the font, and I'm going to say what percent complete it is. And somewhere, I said, well, how much time has it taken? And to compute the time, 
how did I do this? Time sec. Where's the seconds taken? Uh, uh, just a minute. Oh, I, 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 I computed the seconds taken down here, I think. Oh, no, the, this is where I uh, show the, the thing. You, 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 you define the labels, define a font. You have to put this horrible little do events thing, and you use this VB modeless, and I didn't know this until I stole it from somebody else. And I should give that credit, but they might get pissed at me. Okay, and then uh, uh, I, I just said, well, if it's on every 50 times, let's show it and compute the time, which is the start time minus the time times 60 seconds. And then, so what you're doing is essentially, it says DSCR calculate. That means you're pressing the F9. You're recalculating the DSCR, recalculating whether you have that default at the very end of the uh, uh, project. And I just did it with a percentage default. And you go to the very end, and then at the very end, you can easily, easily, easily compute the average DSCR and average LLCR, which I compute. And then you can uh, 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 compute the average default. But when you have to count, uh, the count if doesn't work with these, these range names. And I looked it up, and I Googled it, and all that. It doesn't work. You have to make your own little count if uh, 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 count how many times it's defaulted. So that's a little bit of a problem. And if you use these array variables, you could do a, a, a slow thing where you just write it out to Excel each time, but that's going to slow you down just a bit. So, so that's why I did it like this. So right now, let's start. Let's, let's take our first example, our case one with a volatility of 5%, a mean reversion of 7%, a 1.2 times DSCR, and a tail of only one year. Let's see, 5%, 7%. So we go here, and we put uh, here, let's put, the, let's put it down to 5%. I hope that, that, that you can see, okay, obviously I'm putting the, that thing up there. I hope you can see how it's not hard to do this. The most important thing is to show you the effect of some of this. And then we only have a 1.2 times DSCR. Okay, and then I, I should have made a little spinner box for the last thing, but we put our uh, 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 over here, I put a a, 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 a tenor of 34 years. This means it's constrained by the 80%. And if we computed the PV of the CFADS without this, we would get 1,500. So we've got a little less debt. Let's get a little more debt into this. Let's, let's put 1,700. That means that, and no, I can't put that. That's too low. 1,000. I'll put 1,500 back, and I'll make the. I'll make it 85 percent constraint. Uh, is that? This should be blue. I should rerun the, 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 the thing. So so now I'm constrained by 85 percent. Okay. 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 Well, let's let's just use this one, and so I go to the structuring results. Okay, and then. Let's put no lockup. Let's put no cash sweep in here. Let's put no DSRA in. And then what this number will give us here, it'll, it, it will go through the, the, the simulation and compute it all. And I'm going to do 1,000. That means we're going to read dimension to 1,000. And then you can see this little thing that's counting. So I have a lot of stuff in here, I hope, that you can steal and use because I've stolen it from other people. And that's the way I hope you learn sometimes. You know, other people think they're too advanced for all this stuff, I guess. Okay, and if we have no constraints at all, I hope we get, we get, oh, only a 2.5% uh, 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 probability of default. I'm going to lower this to 
Okay, and I'm going to run the simulation again and see what if if I have this would be a very tight project, perhaps some kind of contracted project where you have the risk might be efficiency in the heat rate, or maybe it's some kind of government guaranteed project with a traffic guarantee, something like that. It could be a, an availability project. And unfortunately, I still get this, and I'm going to have to increase my volatility to about 10%. Okay, I'm sorry I had to do that uh, one more time. This time I'm going to pause it. Okay, well that, that, uh, 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 that volatility made a very big difference, and... Uh, uh, we get a gigantic probability of default, and we get this loss given default. We have 20 27%, and this is this that graph of the ending default, okay? So that volatility made a really big difference. You know, uh, what I'm doing right now is experimenting, but I'm just going to do one, one thing and then finish this video. So if I put a a covenant in and put a really extreme cash flow sweep let's make it this and i put a big dscr let's see how much this stuff matters if it doesn't matter for me that's a, that's a big answer too so for a tight project and we could evaluate which one matters and we're going to look at this a probability of default and see what happens okay so while I'm running this I'm going to summarize it and, and what I'm going to do for the class now I'm talking to myself I'm going to have to kind of make sure these scenarios work and I thought I had them working I thought I had them working and now I'm getting a call uh, one second I'm making a video uh, just a minute Okay, another interruption, and I'm not going to really use this because, well, in a way, I can use this because 7% would not be an unreasonable amount given the credit spread. I have to be a little careful because if it's the present value, no, it would be too high. So we'll have to lower the volatility, and then I'm going to give them kind of different cases, and then we'll fill in these four cases with and without the uh, 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 credit, with with an, without the credit enhancements, and see the effect on the probability of default. Again, it's theory. I think it's a little interesting. I think that I mean the, the the practice, of course, is the is making sure the model works. And uh, uh, you know, if if you're a modeler watching this, because all these people are all the structuring investment bankers, they're too good to watch any of this stuff by far, and they'd never make it to the end. But eventually, if you, when you become this big rich person who does all this structuring, you know, you'll be able to say, no, it's the debt size that matters. Damn, we got to get that size right. And then after you get the size right, you can refinance. And then when you're negotiating with the banks, you can illustrate and say what really matters and how this mean reversion really matters and really think about things in a more sophisticated way. Not, none of this stuff is, is just about mauling and I've got to stop now because I've got another call.